Your Excellency, distinguished uh, guests, uh, participants, uh, virtual and uh, here in Suva Fiji, uh, for this first ever Pacific Satellite Summit, part of the Global Disability Summit. I first want to, in thanking you for your attendance and participation today, uh, acknowledge uh, the, the, the co-hosts of the Global Disability Summit, the governments of uh, Norway and governments of Ghana, together with International Disability Alliance uh, for um, supporting this event. And I would also like to acknowledge upfront the co-hosts of the Pacific Satellite Summit, the, uh, the government of Australia, the government of New Zealand, uh, Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat, Pacific Disability Forum, and of course, CBM Australia for their support. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters with disabilities in our region, we have come to this day, to this event, to celebrate diversity within our region. And, and if you can allow me to diversity in terms of disability inclusion in our region. And I would just like to uh, quickly uh, provide a quick, uh, the overview of the, the overall objectives, the overarching objectives of this summit. We want to elevate the voice of the, of the Pacific, the Global Disability Summit. We want to ensure that people with disabilities and their representative organizations are actively involved, including advice in advanced disability inclusion and of course, want to reaffirm commitment and mobilize support for disability inclusion in our region here in beautiful Pacific. We have some key outcomes and I just want to flag the, this here front also. We of course have a specific statement that will be shared at the Global Disability Summit later on uh, for this evening, our time in the Pacific. I uh, will also hear uh, that also at this, uh, this specific satellite summit. And that statement, of course, uh, recognizing the support for the Pacific framework for the rights of persons with disabilities uh, that will conclude in 2026, couple of years time. We also, through the breakout session of uh, organization of persons with disabilities, and of course you are supporters and our advocates, identify opportunities and challenges around disability inclusion in our region. And of course, uh, as part of this summit and the Global Disability Summit, we want to hear and learn of new commitments to the, to the disability inclusion in our region. Now, having said that, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, disabilities, distinguished, distinguished guests, I now have the honor of welcoming and inviting the co-chair of Pacific Disability Forum uh, Ms. Vilani Remenjasau, uh, joining us from Palau, the Northern Pacific, to welcome us all. Thank you, Kuchalani. Good morning, Excellencies, distinguished colleagues and friends, my fellow brothers and sisters with disabilities, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great honor and privilege that I speak before you on behalf of the Pacific Disability Forum and also in support of all organizations of persons with disabilities who are present with us today. I warmly welcome you to this first Pacific Satellite Summit. It's one of the main events being held ahead of the Global Disability Summit scheduled for 16th to 17th February, 2022 Central Eastern Time. We are delighted to be here today co-hosting this event with governments of Australia, DFAT, and New Zealand MFAT and in partnership with the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat, PIFS and CBM. Thank you all for joining us today. This event is about all of us working together, sharing ideas and good practice to ensure that as we work towards a more prosperous Pacific where no one is left behind. Today, we have come together to work as partners and stakeholders reaffirming our commitment and collectively step up our efforts and support for disability inclusion in the region through the Pacific Framework on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, PFRPD, and the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, CRPD. 
We have been working to tackle the causes of stigma and discrimination. We have been discussing how we as individuals and society work together to remove the barriers faced by persons with disabilities. We have worked hard to ensure that persons with disabilities are given equal access and voice in the society so that they can efficiently and effectively participate in the society on an equal basis with others. Today, we focus more on accelerating our actions, working together as partners and holding ourselves and each other to account for our promises and commitments. The commitments we can bring to this summit to advance disability inclusion and bring about real change for persons with disabilities in the Pacific. Therefore, we are here to do our utmost to ensure our collective and diverse Pacific voice is represented within global discussion on disability inclusive development towards 2030 agenda for sustainable development, leaving no one behind. We have come a long way, but we are here to do more and better together as one Pacific family. If you are joining us today as the government representative, policy decision maker, stakeholder, partner, donor and ally, or even as a person with disabilities, it shows us your concerted effort, support and commitment to be part of this voyage with us. And I thank you. Let us not forget that we cannot make those lasting change for persons with disabilities without persons with disabilities. And I quote, nothing about us without us. We look forward to strengthening these partnerships with you further through shared learnings so together we can make these rights a reality across the Pacific. With these words, I, I once again welcome you to our first Pacific Satellite Summit. May it lead to fruitful deliberations. I thank you. Thank you, uh, Co-Chair Lani. Uh, I also, as moderator for the this uh, Pacific Satellite Summit, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Setariki Madanoi, uh, currently working as a CEO for the Pacific Disability Forum. And uh, I, I, I note that we are already four or five minutes than schedule. And I would like uh, to uh, just to uh, put it across the table, the speakers that are coming up, that we would like to stick close to time as much as possible. Now, having said that, um, uh, excellencies, uh, distinguished uh, guests, uh, participants, um, and also um, uh, invited guests and brothers and sisters with disabilities. We have uh, some uh, official statements to be shared at this summit. And firstly, we'll have, uh, I believe, a video recording from the government of Norway, Deputy Minister for International Development. You have to forgive me, Honorable Deputy Minister, for not uh, saying your name, and I wouldn't like to butcher that. So I'll, stop, I'll skip that, but acknowledge your title this morning, and um, over to Alex uh, for the video. Thank you. Thank you for organizing and inviting me to this important event. We have a common responsibility to ensure inclusive development. Through collaboration and sharing of best practices, we have a better chance of succeeding. And that's why it's so important to get the perspectives also from your region. We look forward to kicking off the Global Disability Summit 2022 only hours from now. Together with our co-hosts, the Government of Ghana and the International Disability Alliance, we aim to promote equality and to facilitate lasting change for persons with disabilities through joint action. The Global Disability Summit in London in 2018 succeeded in placing the issue of rights-based, disability-inclusive development on the international agenda. We wish to build on the progress made 
after that first Global Disability Summit, and we have high ambitions for the 2022 summit. The Global Disability Summit will mobilize efforts to further the implementation of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, or CRPD, in line with the principles of leaving no one behind and to build back better and more inclusively during and from the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm very happy to be able to share with you that we have received many commitments from a wide range of actors. The highlights will be shared by high-level participants at the summit and in the chair's summary. Norway's partnerships with Pacific Island states has never been deeper than today. We are working together as large ocean states in the United Nations and now also as dialogue partners in the Pacific Island Forum for climate and oceans, health and humanitarian action, including during disasters such as the enormous volcanic eruption in Tonga last month. With your support, Norway is now in the Security Council, focusing on climate change as a security concern. We put the highest priority on the most vulnerable nations and people. And that includes people with disabilities in developing countries. We look forward to collaborating closely with you and other stakeholders to raise the bar and obtain inclusive development. Thank you. I believe you're muted, Sarah. My, my huge apology. Alex, you okay? Am I okay? Yes, you are. Thank you. Yes, okay. Uh, thank Hello. you very much, um, Honorable uh, uh, Deputy Minister of International Development, the Norwegian government. We hear you uh, loudly and clearly, and thank you for acknowledging the vulnerability of our, of our countries in the region and also our people. Um, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, our colleagues, um, our next speaker is from the government of Australia, but I will um, invite the Australian ambassador for women and girls, Ms. Christine Clark, uh, to introduce uh, our uh, statement from uh, the government of Australia. Thank you, uh, Ms. Christine Clark. Ministers, Excellencies, friends and colleagues, it is my great honour to welcome you to the Pacific Satellite Summit of the 2022 Global Disability Summit. Like all of you appearing online, I wish circumstances allowed me to be physically present in Suva today. As a once in four year event, the Global Disability Summit is an important opportunity to take stock, elevate the voice of people with disabilities and reaffirm our support for disability inclusive development. It's been a privilege to work with our co-hosts, New Zealand, the Pacific Island Forum and the Pacific Disability Forum to bring this important event to the region. The Pacific is part of our family and it is only through working together that we can ensure we leave no one behind. And we know that now more than ever, we need to focus on disability inclusion. The COVID-19 pandemic has presented serious difficulties for us all, but especially for people with disabilities. As we've pivoted our development assistance program to deal with the pandemic, Australia has prioritised those most vulnerable to COVID-19 impacts, including people with disabilities. 
through our $523 million Vaccine Access and Health Security Initiative, in which we have committed to sharing 60 million vaccine doses with the region. We're assisting countries to support equitable access to vaccines for people with disabilities. Additionally, our $304.7 million Pacific COVID-19 response package is also working to help mitigate impacts and improve outcomes for people with disabilities. For example, we've provided extra cash transfers to at least 13,000 people with disabilities across Fiji, Tonga and Vanuatu to provide economic security and support their resilience. As part of our 2022 Global Disability Summit commitments, Australia will also strengthen disability inclusion across all health security investments in our development program to mitigate the impact of emerging health threats on people with disabilities. Australia is a proud global leader in disability inclusive development. Since 2009, when we were the first global donor to launch a disability inclusive development strategy, we have been pleased to support partners and programs that make life easier for people with disabilities. I know many of those partners are at this summit today. Building on this strong history, I'm pleased to announce today that Australia will develop a new policy outlining our commitment to protect and promote the rights of people with disabilities around the world, including through our development cooperation program. We will continue our strong support for an active and central role for people with disabilities. And we'll increase funding for priorities of disability organisations, including through our long-term partnership with the Pacific Disability Forum. We're also looking for new ways to bring Pacific development partners together to support people living with disability. Colleagues, I also want to take a moment to acknowledge the recent volcanic eruption and tsunami in Tonga, which caused unbelievable destruction. In line with the Charter of Disability Inclusion in Humanitarian Action, Australia is ensuring people with disabilities can access the support they need. As host of the 2022 Asia-Pacific Ministerial Conference for Disaster Risk Reduction in Brisbane this September, we will work with partners to ensure a strong focus on disability inclusion. Colleagues, I am proud of Australia's strong history in promoting the rights, protections, fundamental freedoms and inclusion of people with disabilities. Australia will continue to be a strong, reliable partner in our shared quest to build an inclusive, accessible Blue Pacific continent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Honourable Senator Ted Zelja for um, the encouraging and positive words. And I uh, forgive me for, uh, for um, applauding the, uh, the, 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 the commitment to increase funding to the Pacific Disability Forum, we truly appreciate that. Um, Honorable Senator Selge, of course, as we know, is the Minister for International Development and the Pacific. Uh, we will uh, go to the Government of New Zealand and yet again, one of our great champion on disability inclusion in our region uh, and also globally. Uh, I would like to introduce the Honorable Kamal Sepuloni, the Honourable Minister for Disability Issues in New Zealand. We welcome you, Honourable Minister. Good afternoon and warm greetings from Aotearoa, New Zealand. It is with great pleasure that I address the Pacific Satellite Summit today. Uh, New Zealand is very proud to co-host the inaugural Pacific Satellite Summit and welcomes the participation of Pacific Islands Forum Deputy Secretary General Dr. Philemon Manoni, Australian High Commissioner to Fiji John Fix, uh, you Mr. Seteleki Madanawe, our CEO of the Pacific Disability Forum and moderator of today's summit, good to see you again, uh, Sara Minkara, a US Special Advisor for International Disability Rights, and all of you that are on this call uh, for this very important purpose today. Due to our remote geographic location, the Pacific can be underrepresented in global discussions on disability inclusion and disability inclusive development efforts. 
recognizing this, as well as the unique context and experiences of disabled people in the Pacific, the summit is an opportunity to share Pacific experiences and identify opportunities for new development partners. This is a welcome opportunity to showcase the work of disability advocates in the Pacific, collate our commitments to the region, and elevate Pacific voices on disability inclusion ahead of the Global Disability Summit later today. There is great value in learning from one another and adopting regional approaches to the realization of human rights in our Pacific. New Zealand welcomes the implementation of the Pacific Framework on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities we are committed to strong regional action and shared stewardship, which is disability led with disabled people at the forefront. Responding to the COVID-19 pandemic, and more recently, the volcanic eruption and tsunami in Tonga has reminded us of the importance of meaningful participation and engagement of disabled people. Developing communications that are inclusive and accessible is critical to keeping people informed. The rights of disabled people are a priority for the New Zealand government. We have a strong history of protecting and promoting disability rights, both domestically and internationally. New Zealand is committed to taking global leadership on protecting and advancing the rights of disabled people in our foreign policy, and international development engagements. New Zealand recognises the critical link between genuine inclusion, consideration and leadership of disabled people in supporting the long-term resilience and prosperity of the Pacific region. As the Minister for Disability Issues in Aotearoa, New Zealand, I am constantly reminded that disability rights and inclusion for disabled people will only occur through the active engagement and partnership with experts on inclusion, that is disabled people and their representative organisations. Dr. Jonathan Godfrey, who is participating in today's summit, has been a strong advocate for Article 4.3 of the Convention, more commonly known as the Nothing About Us Without Us article. Congratulations, Jonathan, on your New Year's honour. We remain committed to supporting Sir Robert Martin's participation and contribution to the UN Committee for his continuing membership. Sir Robert has been a lifetime advocate for persons with disabilities and his experience brings a unique and crucial perspective to the committee's work. While great steps have been taken, we all know that much more is needed. We look forward to working with you all to further advance the rights of disabled people in the Pacific. Fafsai lava, malo apito. Thank you very much, Honorable Mr. Sepuloni. Our, our fourth uh, statement will be delivered by the Deputy Secretary General for Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat, uh, Dr. Philemon. Dr. Philemon Manoni, uh, the Deputy Secretary General for Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat. You have the floor, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, uh, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Bulavinaka, uh, indeed, it is a pleasure for me to join you at the Pacific Satellite Summit uh, this afternoon. Uh, the uh, Pacific, uh, as you know, uh, is often uh, underrepresented in global disability inclusion discussions and efforts, and I am pleased through this Pacific satellite that the Blue Pacific continent is better engaged with the 2020-22 Global Summit and continue to build on this. The Pacific Satellite Summit is an important platform uh, through which we can elevate the voice of Pacific global disability 
uh, summit around the world on how we are progressing as one blue Pacific continent. We are well aware of how persons with disabilities in the Pacific are overrepresented among those living in poverty and sadly underrepresented in decision-making platforms that discuss the national, uh, regional, social, economic, and health well-being of our people. The COVID-19 pandemic has further intensified these impacts and inequalities. The Pacific Framework of Rights of Persons with Disabilities confirms that the Pacific leader's commitment to disability inclusion. The framework supports Pacific countries to fulfill their CRPD commitments and within the protection and fulfillment of the rights of persons with disabilities to strengthen coordination and collaboration. This commitment recognizes that we can only move forward if we work together. Pacific Forum leaders have agreed to develop a 2050 strategy for the Blue Pacific continent. In order to protect people, a place and prospects of our very own Blue Pacific. Recognizing that the long-term vision is vital to addressing the challenges facing the Blue Pacific, particularly in the face of COVID-19 pandemic and the ongoing impacts of climate change. The meaningful participation of persons with disabilities in the process has ensured that the voices of persons with disabilities are heard and their visions reflected, solidifying inclusivity and equality as central to realizing the vision of the strategy. There has been great progress to ensure the rights of persons with disabilities are being realized in the Pacific. Among them are the increased ratification of the CRPD by 13 Pacific countries, the integration of the Pacific Regional Inclusive Education Framework into the Pacific Regional, uh, Regional Education Framework that established the Pacific Group on Disabilities a statistics that is led by national statistics offices and the inclusion of disability related concerns in disaster risk management, as well as in climate change adaptation framework and strategies. However, much more is required to make the right real and to support persons with disabilities uh, to lead healthy, safe and productive lives. There are still key priorities such as receiving national policies and legislation, so they are CRPD compliant. Collection, a correlation, and analysis of disability statistics to inform policy development, disability inclusive budgeting, and building a specific body of knowledge on disability inclusive needs in the region that need to be action. Of particular importance is the need to meet preconditions for inclusion, uh, which are foundational aspects to ensure that persons with disabilities can meaningfully participate uh, effectively and contribute uh, and enjoy quality of life. It is no doubt critical for regional development partners through the, F, the PFRPD to continue to work collaboratively and to coordinate to ensure that resources are used strategically to drive some of the changes needed for more disability inclusive Blue Pacific continent. This Pacific Summit and the Global Disability Summit is an opportunity to once again reaffirm our commitment to disability inclusion in the region and to accelerate action on Pacific framework for persons with disabilities and the CRPD. It is an opportunity to garner support to progress 
the achievement of our commitment under this work. International, regional, and national partnerships are crucial for the rights of persons with disabilities to be realized. Their social, economic opportunities enhanced and to ensure that a blue Pacific continent that is inclusive, barrier free, rights based, and embraces the diversity of all Pacific. I, I wish you well in your discussions today. And I also, at this juncture, I take this opportunity to convey to you Secretary General Tunis well wishes for a successful Pacific Satellite Summit and a strong, strong United Pacific voice at the Global Disability Summit. Let us not miss that opportunity. With this brief, brief remark, uh, I wish you all well this afternoon. Thank you again for, your, uh, for the opportunity to address you this afternoon. And um, thank you very much, Binaka. Thank you, uh, Honorable Deputy Secretary General, Mr. Violence Forum Secretariat. Uh, excellencies, uh, distinguished uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, brothers and sisters with disabilities. That concludes uh, the fourth uh, statement presented from, uh, from our region and the Pacific. Um, and of course, we heard uh, from uh, the Norwegian government as well. Now, we'll turn out. Uh, I'll focus briefly to, to the international uh, uh, scene, if you like. And here we have two speakers that I would like to invite. Um, firstly, uh, we'll have a, <clears throat> an apology if I, if I didn't pronounce your, your name uh, correctly. Ms. Sarah Minkara. Uh, she's the US Special Advisor international disability rights. So we'll hear from her uh, and then uh, uh, we'll have our, our, we'll hear from the executive director for International Disability Alliance that I'll introduce later. We have the floor, Ms. Minkara, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever we are. Um, my name is Sara Minkara and I'm the US Special Advisor on International Disability Rights. Before I start, I'm gonna um, say a very simple phrase. The inclusion of all is a value for all. The inclusion of 1 billion individuals in this world is a value for all. The inclusion of 1 billion persons with disability is a value for all. We, the US government, are committed to advancing the rights of persons with disability through a value-based lens. What do I mean by value-based lens? We cannot achieve full prosperity and peace if we do not recognize, embrace, and include the value that persons with disability bring forward to the global community through the economic, social, political lens and so much more. We are humans with so many values and so many contributions. When we look at disability inclusion through a value-based lens, we start creating this narrative that we don't have to include, but we want to include. It's not just the right thing to do, it actually brings benefit to everyone. And when we embrace that narrative, then from the get-go, we design policies, programs, procedures that is inclusive person with persons with disabilities from the beginning. We're not seen as an add-on, we're seen from the initial system. As a blind woman, I've benefited greatly from the US leadership when it comes to disability policies and laws. The American with Disability Act allowed me to live a full life and actualize my potential. We want to bring that forward and through our main priorities surrounding advancing human rights in countries of crisis and conflict and disasters, promoting disability inclusive democracies, 
fostering accountability and building capacity, and most importantly, disrupting the narrative surrounding disability to move from a charity-based perspective to, to a value-based perspective. But you know what? The world keeps on moving forward and changing, and we're always constantly dealing with new challenges. Whether it's COVID, whether it's climate change, and in all of these issues, we need to make sure not only are we not leaving disabilities behind, but how do we actually tap into the expertise and experiences and the value that persons with disabilities bring forward to solutions when it comes to these issues. The Global Disability Summit is an important summit for the disability community and for the entire global community. It's giving us the space to discuss and address and have a conversation around how, what our commitments we can bring forward to make sure we are representing the value of persons with disabilities. I am proud to say that the US government has made commitments, both State Department and USAID that are cross-sectional and that really cover topics ranging from political participation to data collection, to climate change, to women and violence, to, to disability inclusive democracy, and so much more. I wanna make sure that we are looking at persons with disabilities and embracing our value and expertise and experiences. I wanna make sure that we are not only saying the phrase nothing about us without us, but we are also saying nothing without us. Disability should be part of every single conversation. Nothing without us. I'm gonna end with this one statement. We all have the power within us as individuals and countries and governments and organizations to be able to bring forward this value-based lens. The inclusion of persons with disabilities is a value for all. Thank you so much, everyone. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you very much, Ms. Sarah Minkara. Um, for, for your encouraging words. We'll turn our attention to uh, the executive director, a CEO of International Disability Alliance, our very own, uh, Mr. Vladimir Chuk. Vlad, you have the floor, thank you. Thank you very much, Chair Seth. It is, it is a great pleasure uh, to, be, to be presented uh, by you. Thank you very much. Uh, it, is, it, it is a great pleasure for, for me and, and for, uh, uh, for the International Disability Alliance to be part uh, part of uh, part of this very important uh, very po very important uh, regional summit. Excellencies, uh, distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to the first Pacific Regional Disability Satellite Summit. I would like to thank the hosts, uh, governments of Australia, New Zealand, Pacific Island Forum Secretariat, and Pacific Disability Forum. Thank you for your for your leadership and for your for your commitment to change. Uh, uh, International Disability Alliance responsibility as a cost for the for the global disability summits is to ensure that the voices and perspectives of persons with disabilities are central in the planning, the planning and design of the summit. For for GDS 2022, we made this possible, for example, through uh, through national and and regional consultations many of them in the months preceding the summit. Some of you have, uh, have participated in these consultations. Thank you for that. The GDS or Global Disability Summit represents a platform to achieve actual change that can truly impact the lives of persons with disabilities, especially in the Global South. It aims to rebalance the disconnect between political commitments that were, that were leaders made over the past years with, with real financial commitments that never followed really at a sufficient level. Today, I would like to stress the level of importance that this mechanism has achieved and, and generally commitment interest it gained around the world. Regional Summit, this one, together with the five, five, uh, five, five regional summits that we have organized, 4,700 registered participants for the main uh, for a main summit thus far, 
3,000 registered participants at, at the Youth Summit, more than 1,500 1, commitments made thus far, and, and close to 100 side events are all testimony to this success. This is a historical moment, ladies and gentlemen, that we are sharing to, today. I, I really call you to, to really uh, welcome and to embrace this, this fantastic moment. Through, through, through this event today, we, we would like to remind donors and all stakeholders committed to disability, disability inclusive development and humanitarian action that this part of the world should not be forgotten. The disability uh, movement needs to be supported now more than ever before. Between the, the two summits, we witnessed COVID-19 pandemic, which catastrophically affected persons with disabilities. The pandemic not only deprioritized lives and rights of persons with disabilities, not only pushed millions of persons with, with disabilities in, into poverty and out of jobs, but also reminded us that discrimination is still very present. Against this backdrop, we are gathering today to reposition disability rights once again at the right track. It must be the top priority uh, topic of governments and, and government agencies of private sector, academia, civil society, once again. It must be priority in, in a sustainable way against all challenges and crises that we may face in the future. The disability agenda cannot be fragile anymore. GDS 2022 therefore holds incredible responsibility while indeed an opportunity as well to, to do exactly that, to say to the world that persons with disabilities cannot be overlooked anymore in, in anything that affects their lives. And I will join uh, Sara Minkara and say that indeed, until now, the motto of disability rights movement was nothing about us without us. But, but everything, every possible agenda is about persons with disabilities. So, so simply, we are calling for changing this motto to nothing about us because there is no conversation, no, no, no area of life or community living from which persons with disabilities should be excluded, right? In this region, there are, as in many parts of the world, urgent issues to be solved. From climate change that, that we heard so, so many times in the first speakers of this summit, to, for example, education or employment. We all need to coordinate efforts if we want to be, to be successful. I wish you, very successful summit, which I believe has enormous responsibility to serve as the bridge between the Pacific and the rest of the world. We, we at the uh, IDA are standing committed to help build these bridges in the future. I feel very optimistic and I believe that we should, we should all be optimistic and excited about the, about the future. The world needs some, some good news in the second year of pandemic. And I'm sure that we can start bringing these good news from the Pacific exactly. Good luck and, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vlad. Uh, thank you for your well wishes. And, and thank you also uh, to um, excellencies, distinguished uh, uh, participants that have uh, addressed us this morning. Um, we, we, we have uh, been, uh, as co-hosts here in the Pacific Satellite Summit, uh, have been talking about uh, uh, bringing the global summit, the world to the Pacific, and also doing the reverse, taking the Pacific to the world. Uh, your, your, your comment there, Vlad, is truly appreciated. And also, uh, nothing about us or nothing without us, as uh, Ms. Sarah Minkara said. Also acknowledging the commitments that uh, we, we are hearing already, governments of uh, Norway, government of Australia, government of New Zealand, and indeed, the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat, who I did mention earlier at the outset, one of our, uh, our key outcomes, fresh new commitments to disability inclusion in the Pacific. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished participants, we are now at a juncture of breaking into our uh, breakout rooms. I, I just want to, uh, to mention here that we are running a little bit on schedule. We are... Uh, we are 1.47 uh, Fiji time. Uh, we are seven minutes, I believe, on schedule. Uh, I suggest we take the full hour uh, for the breakout session, uh, which means uh, that we'll uh, uh, cut into our, uh, your break. Uh, so if you can come back at, um, there'll be one, what's what the time now? 1.48, so we'll come back at, uh, come back at, um, 
148 will be with. Yes. Okay, uh, uh, Excellencies, uh, distinguished uh, the participants, and I want to acknowledge also the wonderful moderators for the three breakout uh, sessions, and indeed the panelists that presented in, uh, in each of them. I want to thank them on all our behalf. Um, we, we are due for a break. In fact, we're actually overdue for the break for 10 minutes, but I'm just wondering whether 2.50. Uh, could I, because we'll need to, to, uh, to uh, have our moderator, three moderators to report back uh, on each of the three sessions. So I think they might need the 10 minutes uh, to, um, uh, to uh, get those uh, recommendations in, in, in in consultation with the rapporteurs and the three different breakout sessions. Could I suggest we all come back at 3 p.m. Fiji time? So which means you still have 10 minutes, but we may have to shorten the reporting back period uh, segment or maybe uh, the ensuing sessions. If it's okay with you, I'll uh, uh, suggest we break now and for 10 minutes, we'll come back at 3 p.m. And then we'll uh, revert to the three moderators for the reporting back from each of the concurrent session. Renaka and see you at 3 p.m. Fiji time. With a disability. And I live in poverty. My experience in discrimination is compounded. Access to my community is so difficult for me. You know how I'm put and you know include me inside. How is it okay to commit rape without punishment? I have a name. Don't call me by my disability. We have contributions to make. Me too. I am an athlete, and through sports, I travel. I advocate for the rights of people with disability. Three of the business for me is about the community, community so they respect them. In a me from by you think same me not strong. I can live independently. Me like a sing sing at the old friend of me. Yeah! This promise I've grown out. <laughs> I'm a mother and a grandmother and I'm a boss of my house. I lead, I advocate, I won't let you stop us. Ensure women and girls with disabilities are included in all development efforts so no one is left behind. No one left behind. Include us. Include me. Include me. My name is Danny Maha. I'm from uh, my the province in the Solomon Island. I'm one of the people with disability and I um, uh, work at whatever say Solomon Island and I'm happy to uh, meet you. One of my friends, he got a disability. He got a wheelchair. He stayed nearby Big River at Matanico. When I see the heavy rain and when I see the people run down to the Matango River, and I wonder what is happening. What is happening? This is oh, Kwahi and community. What is mm, taking them down the street?
I remember my friend said, I said to my mom, oh, one of my friends is there, but I don't know whether their family is helping him or no. We indeed in the AHP coordination um, committee when they come up with their disaster preparedness designing programs and um, some of the partners I NGOs who are coming with that make sure that when they go out and implement their activities I can go with them to help them to see where the person with disability lives um, within their environments um, uh, for them to observe. My friend is like my friend is here by his family. If not, <laughs> I go out to the city. With a disability. And I live in poverty. My experience in discrimination is compounded. Access to my community is so difficult for me. You know how I'm good, then you know include me inside. How is it okay to commit rape without punishment? I have a name. Don't call me by my disability. We have contributions to make. Me too. Japanese. My love. I am an athlete. And through sports, I travel. I advocate for the rights of people with disability. Through the business planning, we support the community. Community solely respect me. I can live independently. Me like a sing sing at all friend of me. This mommy is a grandmother. I'm a mother and a grandmother and I'm a boss of my house. I lead, I forget, I won't let you stop us. Ensure women and girls with disabilities are included in all development efforts. So no one is left behind. No one left behind. Include us. Include me. Include me. My name is Dani Maho. I'm from Malaysia uh, province in the Solomon Island. I'm one of the people with disability and I um, uh, work at YWCA Solomon Island and I'm happy to uh, me too. One of my friends, he got a disability. He got a wheelchair. He stayed nearby Big River at Matanico. When I see the heavy rain and when I see the people run down to the Matango River, and I wonder what is happening, what is happening, this is, oh, Kwahi community, what is mm, taking them down the street.
I remember my friend so I said to my mom, oh, one of my friends is there, but I don't know whether their family is helping him or no. We indeed in the AHP coordination um, committee when they come up with their disaster preparedness designing programs and um, some of the partners I NGOs who are coming. Sata, back to you. Thank you very much. Uh, Alan and Alex and uh, trust the participants enjoy the video that was shared during the break. Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies, gentlemen, and uh, brothers and sisters with disabilities. We, we are now into the, the final hour of this Pacific Satellite Summit and um, which means they have uh, two hours of hard work behind us, uh, receiving statements, as well as uh, hearing some new commitments uh, or the, the strengthening of those commitments, disability inclusion in our region in the Pacific from uh, various partners. And we've taken that to the breakout session across the three different themes. Uh, this is another opportunity and I, suggest we'll give uh, devote 30 minutes uh, for this particular segment in hearing from the three uh, moderators uh, from each of the breakout session on some um, probably key highlights, um, the recommendations that have come out of the three breakout sessions uh, that we would certainly would like to capture in the report and, uh, and, the, and the way forward for uh, uh, the rec recommendations uh, uh, that, will, that will come out of this specific satellite summit. Uh, so as I said, we'll devote 30 minutes, which means 10 minutes per uh, break of session. And uh, I, wouldn't, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on, each, on the three moderators, but they are very capable um, in, in, uh, in sharing with us uh, the highlights, the sharing, the learning recommendations from each of the breakout session. And I'll begin with, a, with uh, the theme one. And I would like to welcome uh, the executive director of the Pacific Islands Association of NGO. Um, it's a uh, uh, good friend, the Siale. Uh, you, can I give you 10 minutes, Siale, for your, your, your reporting back from uh, theme, theme one breakout uh, session. Inaka. Thank you, um, Mr. Setta, for the opportunity. I have to apologize in advance if I cannot uh, do a good job uh, trying to um, summarize the wealth of uh, uh, knowledge uh, and insightful uh, experience shared by uh, our uh, speakers uh, in the panel. Um, if I could just uh, uh, highlight a few, uh, one of the things that I uh, it, it stand out from um, the setting the scene uh, is the understanding that the conventions um, on the right of people with disability, uh, in addition to that, uh, the uh, Global 2030 agenda uh, is, is like a platform uh, that is providing for people with disability uh, to claim uh, the realizations of their rights, uh, to be inclusive uh, in, in a whole lot of range of, of, uh, of work um, in the Pacific, but also um, in the rest of the world. Uh, so that's, uh, that's kind of our common currency for, for people with disability that comes out strongly from, um, from the first speaker. 
uh, is that. So if there are, uh, you know, countries in our Pacific that are not yet um, signed or ratify uh, the uh, CRPD, uh, this is this is uh, challenging uh, by the by the uh, our group uh, is that it it means that you had not recognized uh, the rightful rights of people with disability. Um, so with that said that I am kind of uh, uncomfortable because my country where I'm from is also one of those countries that has not realized the right of people with disability uh, just because they have not signed to those, uh, to those uh, uh, instruments. The second one is the capacity uh, to influence policies and in contributing meaningfully. Uh, There's one point that has been uh, articulated really well, where it's referred to the phase one uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, the convention, the right of people with disability. Uh, the people with disability themselves, uh, and, and for those of us are working in this particular area, uh, the capacity to make sure uh, that the, the conventions of the right of people with disability need to be translated from the global level to be translated to fit in uh, to the reality of, of different countries. Uh, and I think that's the point that has been uh, brought in. It's not just for any capacity, but capacity to influence the policy so that it reflect uh, the reality of the convention at the country level. The third point is that the organizations of person with disability uh, is a uh, is a platform uh, uh, in the looking at the institutional building and coordination role uh, of people with disability who are working um, in in this organization. Uh, this platform, uh, the organization of person with disability, is is a platform that allow uh, people with disability to coexist to go deliver, to go develop, because they are expected as well to educate states, um, to provide services for their members. So, so the, the, the point that we should invest resources, the states should invest resources uh, in the organizations of people with disability is crucial. Yeah, and that should be part of their commitment. Um, they also talk about the, the enabling tools and environment uh, and that uh, link to what we are experiencing now in terms of technology uh, is also need to be ensured that people with disability access uh, those, uh, those tools, enabling environment such as technology to make sure that the people with disability uh, participated. One of the key points that has been highlighted is accessibility. Uh, and I don't want uh, uh, care to dwell too much on that, but I think there has been a great point and our note takers will probably articulate that more. Uh, it's already in the uh, uh, presentations uh, of the first speaker. Capacity building is also being identified as, as key. Uh, and, and this is, uh, Quite an interesting point because it, it has also been touched by the second speaker uh, that, uh, but, but at the same time, when we talk about that, that people with disability don't have the capacity, they're not expert, uh, but they need to know enough to engage. But I think that there are a certain areas of, of how do we translate the living experience of people with disability and look at that as their, as their expertise as they experience that they have a lot to contribute. They also touch base on the core policies that need to be identified, uh, law reform, um, talking about the data uh, in terms of a uh, few examples uh, that are already being identified from Kiribati, Palau, Samoa, Tonga, uh, and House, uh, a couple of case studies I uh, shared from these countries uh, that they, they can that they can do that they can collect data. Budgeting is also an interesting one which I really love to 
articulate that it should be included because as much as we say that we signed to uh, the convention or, or as much as we say that we have policy directions uh, and the UN representative also touched that in terms of a lot of commitment that the UN had, uh, had leaned towards uh, people with disability, but if it's not translated to, to funding uh, of organizations that disability uh, people are leading, then, then it, uh, it needs to go uh, that far. In terms of, uh, of the second speaker, he really articulated well in terms of partnership, uh, in terms of two-way applications of the states, the representations of people with disability. That's really a great, uh, a good point that I think that it should be highlighted, that it's, it's not an easy um, uh, work to do in terms of just saying I'm representing or not by just saying that we have one or two people with disability to sit at the table, that's not enough. Representation means that you have to support people with disability and their organization to go out and make sure that they heard the voices of people with disability to be represented. Um, there's also a, a good point made by the, uh, like, yeah. the last speakers that uh, I'll, I'll just finish this. off with this yeah, point. Yeah. I will just finish off with this point, uh, Seta. Uh, that uh, the you. commitment shared by the UN agencies in terms of, I, I think that has uh, highlighted uh, was the support in terms of legislations to ensure that they are actually reflected. The, the Palau, I'm sorry, but the Palau uh, speaker was not able to connect well, uh, but he was sharing um, forming of coalition to support the movement of uh, uh, support the, 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 the issue of, of people with disability to be recognized. I'll end there, uh, Seta, I hope the, the, the note takers will, will uh, uh, add on if I had missed some, some points. Naka. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Lalahia, uh, the director of Tiango, the Civil Islands Association of NGO. Uh, we'll turn to, uh, to, to the uh, theme uh, two, because session inclusive education, uh, Dr. Michelle Beasley, who is the director of the education quality and assessment program of the Pacific community here uh, in the Pacific uh, based in Numea. Dr. Michelle, can I have your nine minutes? Sorry to reduce it to nine minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Seta, and I'm pretty sure I won't take the entire nine minutes, so uh, no worries there. Thank you for the opportunity, and it was an, an excellent session hearing from the, the number of speakers. And while they all came from different perspectives, there were a lot of commonalities, and that's a little bit of what I want to touch on in, in this summary. In our session, we heard about past and present efforts towards inclusive education at the regional and the national levels. We heard that inclusive schools must be accessible, safe, nonviolent, and effective learning environments for all, regardless of gender, disability, ethnicity, or socioeconomic status. It was raised that improving access to schools and learning for children with special learning needs also means teachers must be inclusive in their teaching pedagogies and ensure that all students are benefiting equally from their teaching. For example, inclusive education has been a priority for the Ministry of Education, Heritage and Arts in Fiji since 2017 with a multifaceted approach that includes, among other things, additional grant funding for special needs students, legislation to support inclusive education, policies to support the implementation of that legislation, physical resources such as school buses to make sure students have physical access to schools, and then tools for teachers and schools, administrators and the ministry to support not only the identification and tracking of student needs, but also the educational approaches that have been used with those students. We heard a lot about uh, the regional review on inclusive education and some of the statistics from across the Pacific in a variety of areas. 
um, that was carried out with the support of UNICEF and shared with us by the PACREF Facilitation Unit. We heard about the Pacific Regional Inclusive Education Framework that is fully supported at the very highest levels by ministry, ministers of education on down and is the preferred framework to guide inclusive education in the Pacific. There have been a lot of efforts at a regional level to promote the rights and lives of persons with disabilities, including their rights to education. But the question was posed to the group, how can those be effectively translated into national level actions and monitored to ensure countries are actioning such regional commitments? Regardless of the answer to that question, it cannot be a one size fits all approach, as there are so many differences in terms of availability of resources and contexts across the regions. In enabling access and participation in education for students with disabilities requires multi sectoral efforts. Inclusive education working groups must have multi sectoral representation and a commitment from respective sectors and agencies to collaboratively develop and implement required actions. We were reminded that need for inclusivity and inclusive education does not end as a particular age is reached or a particular milestone in formal education is reached, but rather extends across the lifetime of individuals with disabilities. I am quite certain I haven't done complete justice to the presentations that were shared with our group, but I hope that the note takers will have uh, additional pieces to add to that and I would welcome any input from the presenters who were a part of the session if I have uh, in any way done uh, injustice to what they said. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Dr. Miss Michelle, for, uh, for that uh, wonderful uh, reporting back from uh, theme two. I, I would like just to uh, draw the attention, uh, your attention to a message that has come uh, in, the chat, in the chat box. Uh, let me just read it here quickly. From the Australian ambassador, women and girls, what do you see? the opportunities for young women living with disabilities to join this and other conversation about leadership in the region. So that's a question that's there in the, in the, in the chat box. Um, and I want to acknowledge uh, the, the, the government uh, represent disability focal point from the government of Fiji, Ms. Bukoto for uh, I believe has responded to that uh, question. So please, uh, do put in your, your, your comments on, on the chat box uh, in response to that question from the Australian Ambassador for Women and Girls. Uh, I will turn now to the, 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 the moderator, Ms. Tira, for the breakout session on theme five uh, to, uh, to share with us uh, key findings, uh, learnings, recommendations, maybe, uh, from, from her particular uh, breakout session. And Ms. Tira is the focal point for the Pacific Resilient Partnership uh, Program uh, with the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat, all about DRR, climate change, and the like. Ms. Tira, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and also a big thank you to um, the speaker. So we're part of Team 5. Team 5 was around um, inclusion in a situation of crisis and conflict, including a focus on climate change. And also uh, uh, my uh, personal thanks for the opportunity to be part of this discussion. Um, we started off the session with um, a state of play by um, His Excellency John Phipps, the Australian um, High Commissioner to Fiji. And he shared with us some, some statistics, which I think um, gives us a bit of a, a look into what is happening and how, how, how further improvements can be made 
because um, when you break down the statistics even further to segregate in terms of women and men, it becomes a little bit even more sobering um, in terms of how you look at it, not to mention um, children as well, particularly in the context of um, disaster, um, crisis and conflict. But I think also there was mentioned that at the global level, there are some improvements and particularly around um, how we can better engage um, people with disability. Um, COP26 is a good example where um, people with disability have been given a, an opportunity to be part of the discussion, um, but also within the region. We have um, um, frameworks that do acknowledge the need to include um, people with disability in terms of the policies that are being made, but also the actions that are being undertaken. And I think it does emphasize what we all been talking about, how we can meaningfully involve um, people with disability. The panelists, um, I had um, um, three um, really good panelists. Um, the first one was um, Reverend James Bagwan, um, representing the Pacific Council of Churches. And he gave us a perspective around, um, from a regional perspective, from a faith-based um, organization. And I think um, what he highlighted is that sometimes um, what is happening at the global and the regional level really needs to trickle down to the community level and how um, we can work in partnership, faith-based organizations, governments, and um, partners to ensure that we are meaningfully including people with disability. And he did um, highlight uh, an example where, you know, relocation is happening, uh, particularly in regards to sea level rise. And um, when we start um, relocating um, people internally, it means also relocating them uphill. And that's an issue with um, people with disability. And how is that taken into consideration? But not only that, I think with the recent uh, um, examples um, or experiences with COVID-19, um, psychosocial trauma and also health should not be ignored in regards to um, how we um, work with um, people with disability. But also, I think um, the PCC has been uh, very active in ensuring um, the voice of the young people with disability are included. Um, Kasper um, joined us. He's, uh, he, was, uh, he is the um, branch manager for the Disaster uh, Disability um, Solomon Islands. And um, according to Kasper's own words, um, Solomon Islands um, in the recent um, times has had experienced some man-made conflicts and crisis. And then you add on, on to that the issue of climate change and it's even more um, challenging environment for people with disabilities. And, we um, um, shared some examples around evacuation centers, what, that's, what needs to be improved there. But also it gave us some good um, 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 examples where government um, you know, has been working in partnership with the organizations, um, people with disability organization, which is a, a good improvement, but there's more that needs to be done. And I think um, he came up with a phrase that, um, you know, we should be, um, um, getting rid of um, what he calls um, charity mentality. And I, and I think it was also then um, further emphasized by um, Reverend Bhagwan is that disability is not necessarily inability. Um, also, um, we had um, with us um, Sabira Coelho. He, she is from IOM and um, has been doing some work. IOM has been do, doing some work in the region in regards how they've involved um, people with disability. They've done some um, research as well, and similar also to Solomon Islands. Um, they have um, um, some outcomes that can be shared with the region to help inform what is happening. But also um, the UN has some guidelines that um, advocate for how um, people with disability can be included, particularly in humanitarian actions. Um, I think one of the key messages that has come out from all the speakers is uh, the value of partnership, working together. I'm also emphasizing, you know, um, mainstreaming and really ensuring meaningful engagement of people with disability. That um, um, a terminology that we are all familiar with, leaving no one behind. But what does it really mean in the context of people with disability? Um, there's quite a lot of work that has been done at the regional, global, 
um, with partners and at the national level, and I think we need to be continuing to work on it. Um, so that is some, some of my um, summary. I, I don't think um, I've done justice as well to um, what uh, um, my panelists shared um, um, for this thematic area. I hope also um, um, the vote takers have taken um, more detailed notes on that, but thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Sia. Thank you very much for that, uh, that excellent uh, feedback, uh, reporting back from uh, the theme five breakout session. Um, we have about we have about five minutes, and I believe there have been some uh, response um, to the Australian ambassador for women and girls uh, question. I will just ask uh, Ari, my work colleague here at the uh, Pacific Disability Forum, just to read out a few. And uh, I also would like Shali, uh, uh, um, the moderator for uh, for for, um, for the OPD uh, session, session theme one. Uh, I think I may have hurried you along in our field, you know, reporting back, and uh, I, you may you may have uh, then in the process did not mention any uh, the comments from um, from the UN uh, agency represented by the representative uh, resident uh, regional representative for UNOHCHR. So, Siali, if you have uh, appointed two from the UN or the session, I'll welcome that. But firstly, I'll turn to Ari just to read a couple of comments in response to the Australian Best of Women and Girls uh, question. Thank you, Ari. Thank you. Um, so we have a response from the uh, Vanuatu Disability Promotion and Advocacy Association. Um, where they say we um, advocate for the rights of persons with disabilities. We make sure that people with disabilities in Vanuatu are included in any form of development activities, or let's say empowerment. We also advocate for inclusive education, and we make sure that people with disabilities raise their voice and concern. Um, we also have a comment from uh, Faolo from the um, DRF in the, um, the program office in Samoa. Um, for both the sessions on OPD capacity building and inclusive education, there is one obvious commonality in that governments must be committed to resourcing OPDs and inclusive education policies and leg legislation implementations. We also have a comment from Kylie Shea. Um, she says, I'm interested to hear of the importance that Pacific stakeholders place on key enablers, including and not limited to inclusive health, access to assistive technology and enabling environments. Thank, Thank you, you Ari, for the update from our chat uh, box. Uh, the, could I, Asiali, are you ready to share one or two points uh, on the, the, the input from the UN representatives on uh, theme one? Thank you, Seb. The representative from UN, um, Ms. Haig. Uh, really emphasize the uh, best practices that they uh, that they are having in terms of um, uh, how their work has been guided by the uh, the UN Convention for the Right of People with Disability, uh, and they are very much committed uh, to make sure of, of, of the uh, responsibility that they had uh, as UN agency uh, to. Uh, put some of this work into practice. Um, what does it mean in terms of the context of partnership? So she was looking at uh, partnership as a way of uh, of um, making sure that the is uh, uh, implemented. Uh, they are also looking into the economic and social um, uh, commissions and some of the work uh, that they do in support of the technical support in terms of the legislation review in the Pacific. And they had given a couple of examples which aligned to some of the work shared by um, Mary from Vanuatu. Uh, engaging with uh, VDF uh, was also highlighted, uh, particularly uh, the 
importance of uh, participation of people with disability in the monitoring and evaluation of the work, um, uh, as well as the, the a touch base on the principles of engagement. And that has been something that they have identified uh, as a best practice, uh, particularly in skills development, uh, accessibility to audit, uh, and the commitment in terms of cost sharing of disability officers, which is quite interesting, where they uh, support uh, or, or co-share in the cost of having disability officers presence in their work that can support some of the country's uh, uh, initiative. Um, the last uh, one that I get out of that uh, presentation was also uh, the collaboration approach in terms of looking at um, strategies and framework working in the in the Pacific, but they uh, really highlighted working with your team sector uh, at BDF to make sure that uh, participatory dialogue of partners is happening. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Siale. Uh, please, um, our moderators, uh, particularly those who are joining us virtually, uh, to you, Dr. Michelle, and to you, uh, um, uh, um, uh, Ms. Siale, please, please uh, can just send in your notes. And, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will go into the next session in our um, in, in our program today. And may I again thank all of you, the moderators, the participants. You'd note uh, at the outset, one of the key uh, out outcomes that we want to have is uh, the voices of uh, persons with disabilities through, through the representative organizations. And we can extend that to our partners on, on what is it, disability inclusion in the Pacific, what that should look like moving forward. And that uh, breakout session is certainly an opportunity to do that. So we'd like to. Uh, capture the, 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 all the notes that we can uh, to help us in uh, moving forward together in this area. Uh, it is my, my great uh, pleasure to now turn to Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat. Uh, on the topic accelerating uh, the implementation of the Pacific Framework for the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and the CRPD in the Pacific. And uh, to deliver this presentation on behalf of the Forum Secretariat is Ms. Tale Tunamuana, uh, the Social Policy Officer at PIFS, or Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat. And uh, you, you have uh, 15 minutes or less than that, uh, Ms. Tunamuana, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Seta. Um... Kaylin, can you share my PowerPoint slides, please? Thank you. Bulvinaka, um, everyone. Uh, my name is Tale Tunamwana. I'm the Social Policy Officer at the uh, Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat. So my presentation today will focus on the Pacific Framework for the rights of persons with disabilities um, and uh, areas that have been identified that need acceleration um, through better coordination and collaboration and with the support of our development partners. Next slide, please. Uh, just to provide a bit of background, uh, the Pacific Framework for the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, or the PFRPD, was endorsed in 2016 by Pacific leaders, and it contextualizes the CRPD to the Pacific region. Now, the purpose of the, the framework is twofold. Firstly, to provide a regional modality to strengthen coordination, um, as well as collaboration of national initiatives on disability inclusion. And then the second is to support Pacific governments to promote, protect, and fulfill the rights of persons with disabilities. Um, the vision of, of the PFRPD, and you may have heard our, uh, the PIF's Deputy Secretary General uh, allude to this in his remarks earlier this morning. Um, 
are, is an inclusive, barrier-free and rights-based society for men, women and children with disabilities and which embraces the diversity of all Pacific people. Um, and just in noting that uh, we recognize this, the centrality of Pacific, of sorry, of uh, persons with disability um, in all that we do. And uh, to highlight that we work closely with PDF and uh, other regional partners to progress the implementation of the PFRPD. Next slide, oh, thank you. Uh, there are five goals under the, the PFRPD. The first on livelihoods focuses on um, promoting livelihood opportunities through inclusive economic development and decent work. The second on mainstreaming, uh, mainstreaming the rights of persons with disabilities uh, in development strategy, strategies, in national and local policies, as well as community services. The third um, looks at developing leadership uh, and supporting an enabling environment for rights-based inclusive development. Um, this includes uh, with CRPD training, capacity building for OPDs, strengthening national policy and legislation, uh, as well as representation of persons with disabilities and relevant decision-making bodies, and always ensuring their active involvement in policies or legislation. The fourth goal under the PFRPD is disaster risk management. So ensuring that persons with disabilities are included in climate change adaptation measures and disaster risk management plans and policies. And then the final or the fifth goal under the PFRPD is around evidence um, to strengthen disability research, statistics, and analysis. Um, there, are, there is a governance mechanism under the PFRPD. We have the regional group, regional reference group on disability um, that includes stakeholders who work in the region on dis disability inclusive development. Um, and that group um, reports to the disability task force, which is a formal mechanism for the oversight of the PFRPD implementation um, and reporting. Next slide, please. I'd like to just highlight here some of the key achievements um, on disability inclusion in the region. And these are around education, um, around ensuring accessibility around the built environment. There have been moves to strengthen disability disaggregated data, uh, inclusion and integration of persons with disabilities in uh, regional policies and frameworks, and um, more recently, inclusive and disability specific social protection. Next slide, please. Now, noting that there have been significant achievements, there still remain quite a few challenges, including um, the, the political ownership of disability inclusion is still a major challenge. Um, even though we have commitments that our leaders make at the national level, this does not really translate into uh, political ownership. Um, and in saying that, translating international and regional commitments to, to national action is um, uh, an obstacle in many countries. Another challenge is the inadequate budget support towards disability inclusion. And also some groups within the disability community are not well represented yet. And then the final challenge I've got here is um, good quality disaggregated disability data is still limited and is often underutilized. Next slide, please. Um, in noting the, um, the, the achievements that have been made and the challenges that still persist, um, the Secretariat undertook a, um, a mapping of the PF PFRPD um, and some priority areas for action or gap areas have been identified um, for uh, members uh, as well as development partners uh, to work on and always with um, persons with disability at the forefront of this work. Um, it's critical here to note, I think that um, the, the support to Pacific countries is important to meet preconditions for disability inclusion so that persons with disabilities can meaningfully participate and contribute and enjoy quality of life. Um, 
Now, just the, the first priority area for action uh, is on equality and uh, non-discrimination. So this includes um, development or strengthening of CRPD aligned policies and legislation at national level, um, the development of regional guidelines to support countries to take on this work and the training associated with this. Uh, another point here is uh, the provision of quality and fit for purpose policy advice or policy briefs to enable our governments or our members to um, better integrate um, disability inclusion into national policies and action plans. There's also under this area, um, improving knowledge and awareness, as well as uh, improving greater participation and in inclusion of marginalized groups within the disability community. Uh, the second priority area for action is really focusing on service delivery and strengthening this um, around community-based inclusive development, um, increasing employment opportunities for persons with disabilities and access to basic services such as uh, education, health and access to justice. Um, and in relation to health, we've uh, we also heard during one of the breakout sessions, the importance of uh, mental health and psycho psychosocial um, support um, as uh, we face the impacts of climate change. Next slide, please. The third priority area for action uh, looks at accessibility um, and efforts to progress this within the region. Um, there have been initial steps taken on some pieces of work and this needs to be progressed further and strengthened. This includes uh, accessibility standards and enforcement guidelines, um, um, a procurement platform for assistive technology, regional procurement platform but sorry, assistive technology, um, as well as looking at implementing the relevant recommendations of a report on the experience of deaf people in the Pacific. The fourth area for action uh, really looks at meaningful participation and inclusion in national and regional development in all areas and sectors. Um, we, we highlight here two, um, uh, two points, one on climate change and resilience, uh, because uh, in the Pacific, we feel uh, every day the effects of climate change. Um, and this has been identified as the single greatest threat that the Pacific faces. Um, and uh, the second is on COVID-19 response and recovery um, and, and the impacts that we are feeling now. The fifth uh, priority area for action is around CRPD compliant budgeting and um, public financial management. So really looking at mainstreaming disability inclusion into um, national budget processes, strengthening this where it's happening, um, and also developing the capacity for finance and planning officials to be able to integrate disability inclusion into their um, uh, national budget and, and planning processes. Next slide, please. The uh, sixth and final priority area for action um, I'll discuss today is around accountability and governance. So here it's really looking at strengthening uh, disability, the efforts uh, around disability disaggregated data and um, building on the support to the Pacific, Pacific Group on Disability Statistics, um, which is led by national statistics offices around the region, and also continuing to advocate for the use of the Washington Group short set. Um, another measure of accountability that needs strengthening is input into regional and international reporting requirements um, and uh, how we can support our members in this process. Um, uh, also uh, looking at capacity development, both for our members of the government and for OPDs and ensuring that this is streamlined and collaborative and coordinated. Um, in highlighting all these priority areas for action, I just really want to end here and uh, highlight the important role of our development partners to support this work going forward and to support the region in progressing key priorities based on 
what the region needs, what the needs of uh, persons with disabilities are uh, to um, further implement uh, CRPD and PFRPD actions. Dinaka. Thank you, Seta. Over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Tali. Um, Social Policy uh, Officer, the President's Forum Secretary for their update uh, on the implementation of the PFRPD, a civic framework for the rights of persons with disabilities and CRPD, Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities here in the Pacific. Um, excellencies, distinguished participants and ladies and gentlemen, thank you for staying on this far. We're almost done. Uh, I think we're about 15 minutes away from the end of this session of our first ever Pacific Satellite Summit. We had uh, taken on ourselves and shared with you earlier that we have uh, a, an objective uh, and also it's been translated in an outcome to have a, an objective to raise the Pacific voice, elevating Pacific voice into the Global Disability Summit. And uh, I believe relating to that is an outcome of having a Pacific statement and uh, through the Pacific Violence Forum Secretary to its member states, thank them for the support uh, in, in finalizing this statement and to the OPD reps that also had an input into this statement. Uh, I have uh, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the greatest of pleasure also to invite once again, uh, the co-chair of the Pacific Disability Forum, uh, Ms. Vilani Ramenjasau, all the way there in Palai, the Northern Pacific, uh, to, uh, to read the shorter version of our Pacific uh, statement. And for your information, uh, the, 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 the longer version of it will be shared with uh, the Global Disability Summit uh, organizers to uh, post on the website. Uh, and also this, this statement also will be shared at the launch of the Global Disability Summit as I alluded to earlier. Mr. Ramen Jasau, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Seta. Excellencies, Ali, and warm greetings from the Blue Pacific continent. In recent months, the Pacific has dealt with significant challenges, including COVID-19 and stronger and more frequent natural disaster, disasters, reiterating the need for an inclusive and collaborative approach to development. The future is uncertain. While COVID-19 has dramatically altered our way of life, Climate change continues to be the single greatest threat that the Pacific and its people face. Urgent global action is needed to keep us on the 1.5 degrees Celsius pathway. Excellencies, effective, resilient, and inclusive development is critical for sustained and meaningful progress. The inclusion and participation of persons with disabilities are central to this. Pacific Islands Forum leaders' commitment to disability inclusion is demonstrated through their endorsement of the Pacific Framework for the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, PFRPD, in 2016, which contextualizes the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, CRPD, to the region. The development of the 2050 strategy for the Blue Pacific Continent, representing the long-term vision for our region, involves specific persons with disabilities and their representative organizations to ensure the voices of persons with disabilities are heard and needs reflected. The Blue Pacific continent remains committed to the principle of nothing about us without us. We are proud of our achievements today, but we know more still needs to be done to make the right real. Political ownership of disability inclusion needs to be strengthened. Actions need to be accelerated and commitments made. Pacific countries and persons with disabilities need to be at the helm, driving the disability inclusion agenda and ensure that it remains a priority with the support of development partners. We call on our development partners, current and new, to support the Blue Pacific continent in progressing our key priorities based on our need to implement the CRPD and PFRPD actions. Excellencies, 
forward movement is not true progress if we do not address the needs of all persons, including persons with disabilities, and leave no one behind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm uh, co-chair Vilan Rimentisau, the PDF co-chair, uh, for the excellent reading of the statement as shared already with, with us. Uh, the, the full statement will be out on the website, I'm sure, will be shared to us all through our various uh, co-hosts um, platforms. Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants, every good thing do come to an end. So is, so will be our first ever Pacific Satellite Summit. I will now invite the, uh, the, the, uh, the co-chair of Pacific Disability Forum, Mr. Alato Atama, Alato Talangi, to move a vote of thanks. And if time permitting, before 4 p.m. Fiji time, I will say a final thank you to all of you. But now I will turn over to uh, Co-Chair Latoa. The floor is yours, sir. could to ensure that you your mic is unmuted so we can hear you if you are speaking already. Zoom meeting, start my video, hold me button. Stop my video, hold me button. Audio settings button menu. Is it from there? Currently unmuted. Hold A button. Okay. Can hear you, Coach Alatoa. See, see our center. Can you confirm I'm unmuted? Uh, yes, you are. Okay. Uh, my apologies for that uh, delay in the uh, uh, technical problem from my end. Fakalofala uh, hiatu, kiwara, bulavinaka, ali to my fellow. Co-chair Vilani from Palau, the Northern uh, Pacific region, and uh, warm Pacific greetings to all of you, friends, participants, excellencies, and uh, technical supporters to make this event uh, a success. First of all, I'd like to thank the moderator and uh, the excellent job of thanking everyone as we went on. So I don't have to reiterate thanking all the, uh, the speakers and the government uh, officials and all the um, uh, partners in the process, but uh, I need to acknowledge and make an observation as part of the closing that uh, from my perspective as a co-chair of the Pacific Disability Forum, the organization has uh, been so good in that most of the speakers have been persons with disabilities. And your voices have been heard at this regional level. I congratulate you all for your leadership and your uh, commitment to the cause that we have uh, taken the responsibility for our fellow brothers and sisters who we represent in this uh, platform. I want to thank the translators, interpreters, captioning, and all the technical 
logistical uh, personnel that's in the background that's made this event uh, happen and to uh, guide us through to this point where we have an outcome statement which will go forward to the Global Disability Summit, which will happen in the next few hours. I want to reiterate again and endorse the commitment that uh, our Pacific Disability Forum on behalf of the board of the uh, Pacific Disability Forum, our commitment to work in partnership because we cannot do it on our own. And that is uh, our appreciation for the presence of all our partners that's present in this uh, Pacific Satellite Summit. I wish you all well in your deliberations and your actions at your national levels down to the community levels and look forward to the next gathering of our Pacific Satellite Summit in four years time. And God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kucha uh, uh, Latoa. Uh, Pacific Disability Forum for, uh, for moving that forward of things. Um, surprisingly, uh, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants and brothers and sisters with disabilities, we are about four minutes from the end of our session. Uh, talk about Pacific time, we, 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 we did better than that. And uh, so I really want to, in closing, um, echo the, the sentiments of the, of the co-chairs in thanking all the participants, uh, all excellencies who have graced us in our first ever Pacific Satellite Summit. Uh, to you, um, the, 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 the co-host, organizers of the Global Disability Summit, the government of Norway, government of Ghana, and of course, uh, Vlad and your wonderful team uh, there in um, International Disability Alliance. I uh, thank you for providing the, 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 the logistic support. Uh, to ensure that we um, have a successful event. To all the representatives from the Australian government, from the New Zealand government, from the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat, and also from the Norwegian government, thank you for your wonderful contributions to the introduction of our session today. And again, to all our moderators and panelists in our breakout session, uh, not forgetting also uh, to, the, to, to the US, uh, uh, Special Advisor on International Disability Rights. Uh, we thank you for your wonderful comment. Uh, I turn now to, to the co-host of this event, uh, to the Governor of Australia, Andrea and your team. Thank you and a big uh, to the New Zealand, To the Governor of New Zealand, MFAT, Georgia and your team. Thank you very, very much. And of course, to the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat, to Mel and Tala and your team, and here the Pacific Disability Forum, uh, the staff of Salisa and the team here, and through the co-chairs. Thank you for making it happen. And to all of your participants, 300 some registered for this event, about close to half that are still staying on. You are the reason why we have this event. We look forward certainly, as Coach Alatoa said, to the next Pacific Satellite Summit. And of course, in the immediate future, the what we'll do with our with what we've come up with from the Pacific Satellite Summit. So again, on behalf of the co-hosts of the Pacific Satellite Summit, I thank you for your participation and wish you well and a huge God bless to all of you. Thanking you, and I'll see you again later. Thank you.